Matt. Your journey through the creative world is nothing short of fascinating. From following fish on tour and immersing yourself in a vibrant jam band scene to becoming a powerhouse in digital art and logo design. You've built a thriving graphic shop in Florida that has now grown a strong social media following. Your open-mindedness and creativity have made you a staple in the community. But what I want to know is, do you think you are creative? Um, yeah, I do think I'm creative. I... I have been told more than once that sometimes I live in a cartoon world. I see things a little bit different, usually on a very optimistic level, but um, I think I'm creative, but I think other people's creativity brings that out of me. It, it makes me just yearn to want to do more. So every time I create something, just like any creative, there's things that could have been done better or look at how this guy or this girl is doing it and, and always looking for inspiration to become more creative. So yeah, I do think I'm, I'm creative um, and still trying to expand on that more every single day. Yeah. That's a, a man. just pulling inspiration is always just like the gasoline for creative sometimes at least with me like the most relatable quote i, I always say this to people you've seen mean girls obviously oh yeah just recently actually for the first time yeah the classic right not the new one no the classic yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah the classic. man that movie all movie deserves to be in a museum that is on my mount rushmore of movies but the one quote i just relate to so much is um and I'm blank on uh, Tina Fey when she's like, I'm a pusher, Katie. I push people. Uh -huh. And that's like, I just, that's just my mantra of when I like, I just gravitated so towards a creative, like an artist or anybody where I'm just like, I like you, your thing. I love it. It's so cool. Your personality. Well, it's a vortex. Yeah. I'm you a, get a, sucked a, into it, you yes. know, and, and you, you become inspired by it and you start to pick up on people's waves, if you will, you know, and if you surround yourself with creative people who are just pumped, they're hyped about their creativity. Like you, yourself, dude. You, That's why I love, like, I love being around the, you. It's, it, it's contagious. You know, it's, if you surround yourself with negative people who are just drab all the time, you're going to pick up on that and that's going to be your demeanor. But if you do surround yourself with positive, like-minded people that are creative and, and, you know, we all want to push the boundaries and push for more and, and support each other, then we're always growing. And if you're not growing, you're stagnant, man. Yeah. If you're not yeah. growing, you're, you're dead. That's it. Yeah. But that, that, I mean, the, you said wave and it's really like a ripple effect too, It is where it's just like, I mean, you kind of lead by your example of action a little bit too, and just kind of just always have a, I mean, it, it's, way easier said than done that's why some creatives and just very like outgoing personalities it's almost like they have like this they're they're very outgoing it looks like all happy and in the moment they're kind of by themselves it's just like the artist brains and like the doubt and the thoughts well, too it's like such a balance you have your ups and downs like yeah. there's there's and it's the ups and downs of creativity um there's certain days where you know, you'll work on a design for a customer for two days and it's just not it. And you know, it's not it. And it becomes frustrating because you know, you can make what they want, mm. but you're just not getting it. And you step away and then you come back on that day, that day that the vibe is right. You're feeling it. And holy shit, you knocked it out in 30 minutes and you're like, are you kidding me? I spent four hours of just like literally deleting files because I was like, Oh, I hate what I'm looking at. And then that, that one day you caught somebody else's wave and you caught their energy or just that was the time and bang, it's just, it, it happens. Yeah. And you know, I was just working on a project that this happened to me. I, I had the, the writer's block of logo design. And I knew my ingredients. I just couldn't put them together properly. And I had just talked to a friend of mine and we were kind of pumped talking back and forth about it, a few things. And I sat down, I opened the laptop and I banged it out in like 30, 45 minutes. And when I got done, I was like, that's it. And I know that's it. You know? It's, it's tough because I mean, I can relate to that when I'm like editing photos or video or just even literally working on a creative project where you're just so I'm trying to think of the expression when you're so in the forest you can't see the trees from whatever the expression yeah, is but how do you determine where it's like you walk away and you come back and you have a cl like clearer eyes a clearer mind but where do you decipher from 
that and like you're working on it too much and it's like you're trimming the tree too much and then now that the tree has like no more branches and bushes so it's, it's the bonsai yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly so <laughs> where where's the difference between done and completion because done's never perfect and perfect will never be done so yeah. how do you def how do you decipher that i i know when i feel like something's at its done mark now for me the big variable is the client and sending it to them my my idea of perfection may not be their idea of perfection it could be as simple as just hey can you flip the thing on the bottom to the top and the thing on the top to the bottom and i have reasons it was there but i'm not going to go through and explain it all over and over I, they're my client that's what they want i'll provide it that way and i will say nine times out of ten they ask me to put it back and that's just kind of that you know <laughs> always gives you that little bit of a smile because it reassures that whole trust your gut, you know? So I just know when it's done. I guess it's that that old feeling of saying, you know, when you hit a home run, mm -hmm. you know, you know, when that ball hits that bat. Yeah. It's going out of the park. So you know it. And, and there's your eyes lock on it. And yeah. you're like, that was it. That was the moment. That's the one. It sounds like a spark. So when did that initial creativity spark with you? Um, so you've I, always, you always known you were somewhat creative. So yeah. I don't know if that you had like a spark moment, like in elementary school or middle school or wherever, you know, I don't know if I had a spark moment as much as a pushed into it moment a little oh. bit. So, um, I'm from New Jersey originally I always hung out with my best friend, shout out Bromwell. That's the dude who got me into all this. He was super creative, artistic. His mom was really artistic. She was actually um, I, in my small town. She was the art teacher in our school. Hell she was yeah. my brother who's 10 years older than me. So art teacher and my art teacher. Like she's she's been doing it. And Ryan always had that really creative side. And I always carried a notebook with me writing graffiti in it. And I would just sit around and sketch graffiti in it. What age? 16 okay. probably is when I would say this about took place. And we did a lot of road trips, traveling around, and I would bring my book with me, and I'd always have paint markers, and I would just kind of sketch on the way. And he worked at a sign slash t-shirt shop. They needed my particular set of like hand style that I did for a t-shirt, and nobody there had it. Um, they didn't have like the right font that they were looking for, and they wanted something a little more original. Mm -hmm. So he got me to come into his work that day showed me like my first drawing as a, as a 16 year old kid of business. A it's just like, there's talent here. There's something particular here. Let's see what we can bring him in, what we can do. Yeah. And it was really, cool. were you pretty jazzed at that I point? I was really stoked about it. I was like, you know, I don't know if this is what I'm going to do, but that's really cool. And let's, let's check it out. And I went in, I remember it was a little intimidating seeing, um, all the computers and the machines and the machines were so much different than it makes me feel older. You know, it's like, <laughs> There wasn't the big, large digital format printers and mm -hmm. stuff, but um, there was this older gentleman who he was, his name was George, and this guy was phenomenal at what he did. He was a graphic designer and he was top notch. And I, I did the, I did the shirt design for them. And when I got done, I figured it was a, you know, one off. They'd throw me a couple bucks. I'm sixteen. Yeah, yeah. whatever. They were like, come work for us, you know, come, come learn. George took me under his wing. I start with like picking vinyl, getting to do little design jobs here and there, but all the while sponging, you know, yeah, and course. just watching how it all took place and slowly moved into doing more design work. And even to this day, I'm still running the machine. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would say that it, it was right around 16, just um, in an old Volkswagen, right in graffiti that a friend of mine asked if I would come give him a hand with a t-shirt design. So what made you and even it, like want to take that pen and just start writing graffiti? Just, you just had like this like urge or um, something or inspiration. I grew up really close to Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Love Philadelphia. Oh, that's what the, that's what the, uh -huh, yeah, that's go what, birds. yeah, that's, that's what all it. the tattoos that's I've seen. It. Go <laughs> birds all day. And I just was always just eyes locked 
on every wall that had graffiti on it. And I wanted to do that. Like that was just the coolest thing to me. There was the art, the, self, the, the expression to it. Cause the and closest thing I have to that is just seeing before the bright line was here. It's like the train go by and just seeing like the graphics and that. And how great and is it watching that train? Like I thought so it was cool. visually yeah. appealing. But that, that was like the it. only taste I would get is like a Jupiter native just flying that by. So from someone in your shoes, Going could, to the city, all the bridges, yeah. there was buildings. I mean, it's not like it is today. It was, you know, at that point when I was 16, it wasn't as much as the Wynwood and as accepted as it is right now. So it was still that vandal activity. So there was, mm. you know, you're 16, you're a rebel still. Oh, yeah. you're, you're out there, you're, you're, you're raising hell. You're a punk. Yeah. So we'd go to the city and we'd have some fun and we'd ride a train and I'd bring a backpack with a couple spray cans and kind of pop off to the side and throw my name up on the side of it and um, got in a little bit of trouble with school. Don't, don't do graffiti in the stalls at school kids. They'll catch you. Um, and, but I just always loved that quick, just pleasing art as you drove by it. And, you know, now that I look at it, so the, the graffiti that made me fall in love with art was in the public eye. It's, it's always getting a different audience every day, whoever's driving by or walking by that day. And I guess the same could be said with doing vehicle reps every day that the person gets in their car, whether they choose to go north or south, it's getting a different audience. So I guess I'm just now at this very moment, tying those two I've, uh, yeah. together. I've, that, it's, it's connecting in my brain too. That's yeah, it. That's, that's that an interesting perspective. I never perspective. really put that together until just now that it's a, it's a free moving art. You yeah. know, and, and to be able to now take that punk hooligan kid that was just, you know, throwing his name up on the side of walls to owning a business and, and doing legitimate art and putting it on on walls still, mm -hmm. um, but in a much more professional manner and, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, in a much more legal manner. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I would say right around 16 and then just kind of always stuck with it from then. I've you know, I've always loved the the artsy, weird films and, and yeah. stuff like that. So there's just constant, constant brain food. So as you're working at the shop when you're 16, um, pretty much having like this, I wouldn't even, not internship, mentorship, but like an apprentice even. Yeah, I, I mean, I was a grom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you know, so I was yeah. like a sign shop grom. They yeah. brought me in. Um and they they just taught me what they want when it when they wanted to. That's and so encouraging seeing like as because now being an adult now looking at someone who's like sixteen and seeing the skills there, but even just like like oh man, just like if you do it this way or like let me show you some stuff like that. So I don't know if uh, did you learn a lot for like through business or just like structure or did you like there's a certain key points of like being a sixteen year old kid with all these skills and now kind of like in a professional shop. I learned responsibility at that one. Accountability. Accountability. I learned accountability at that one because, I mean, let's face it, at 16, you're just now coming into accountability. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it, if you if. even are at that age, I learned some accountability of like, you know, actions have consequences. Show up to mm, work. Do yeah. the right thing. Um, and I knew that them bringing me in was not something they had to do. And there was just a feeling about it. And I'm glad that I went with it. Now, I, it wasn't from there forward. That's all I ever did. Um, there was odd ends jobs in between and everything. But that's the same place who I started with just doing a little design from them. Then they taught me how to run a vinyl plotter. Then they taught me how to install graphics on vehicles. So looking back, they taught me a lot. Um, and I... it took all those skills with me when I did finally come to Florida and was able to, you know, start much smaller again, production room. It's where everybody mm -hmm. starts. You'd never start in the front office. It's like yeah. the production room's like the mail room of the, of the sign shop. You know, it's where everybody starts. You learn to, to pick vinyl, trim out stickers, get them in nice stacks for the customers. But if you have that sponge mentality and you're ready to learn and you're willing to learn, then you can move all the way up, you know? I think right there, willing to learn, but also being ready to learn right. is such a big thing because I can even look back at certain times in my life where 
some of the opportunities that I have now, where if I looked back, where I'm like, man, if I had that at that time, I don't think I was even mentally ready. I mean, I, I've, I've I had an opportunity early on where I had people come up to me like, I would like to invest in your business. And me thinking that's a great idea, but me not really understanding the full scope of that too yeah. and having the mental maturity to kind of have that too and then being able to kind of talk with other people too. And then now looking forward, it's like, yeah, now I could see – what certain people were telling me of like, hey, this is what this really means when someone wants to invest in your business. It's not free money. That <laughs> nope. There's no such thing as free money. No, you no, know? no. Way. I've had I've had two different people approach me to invest in coastal bonds. Mm. Um more than grateful. You guys know who you are. Much love, much appreciated. But there's no such thing as free money. And at that point, they become a part of your business, mm -hmm. you know? And of course, I want this business to grow. But at the end of the day, my this is my family yeah. business. And I had to politely decline those offers because I knew I was going to make it. You yeah. know, I mean... I grind. That's it. There's there's different types of people in the world. Those who coast and those who grind. You know the deal. Mm. We grind. Yeah. That's it. And it's why we hit it off the way we do. Because yeah. not only do we grind, but we do it with a smile on our face. And I wasn't sure if having investors was the right thing for me. Hmm. So I decided to stick to it. And I made it through where I needed to be, where it, it wasn't necessary. So I'm glad that I made that choice. Yeah, that willingness and readiness mentally to just even understand what's even being asked of you to even just decipher that and put that into the relationship with the action that you're currently doing. But to kind of even go back a little bit to working in that shop when you're 16, kind of growing up a little bit. So doing other odd jobs too as well. But between like the professionalism of working there, but you as an individual, as an artist, and then coming down to Florida. So I know that you have a passion not only for the art, I mean, like the graphic arts, but with music too. Very much so. Very, yeah. mu very, very much so. So yeah, I live a very musically driven life. Yeah. I mean, That's... I mean, coming in here, you're bumping Mac and Dominic yeah. Feike, and I'm like, oh, fuck yeah. 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 Uh, this is always the vibe in here. Yeah. So definitely keep it a vibe in here. I mean, you walked in today, Mac was bumping. That's the mood today. You might walk in tomorrow. And stick figure is going to be bumping and we're going to be moving a little bit slower and a little <laughs> bit chiller of a day. If you walk in and I got Pantera on, you might want to walk back out and come back another day. I'm probably not having the best day, you know, <laughs> um, musically I'm all over the place and I love it that way because keep it diverse, keep mm -hmm. it, you know, keep it fresh. Um, to me, bumping Mac in the morning, it's just super positive and I just get, I'm like, bopping around and as there. your growth as an artist where did um music play into as an inspiration for you kind of with creating graphs because i remember for you what you tell me with your relationship with fish yes so i have always been coming back and forth to florida my dad lived in lake worth mm -hmm. me and my mom lived in new jersey um around that age of 16 i think we were probably headed from one fish show to another when my friend presented the opportunity to me. Um, 2003, 2004, we did basically the whole tour. Wow. Um, we, we missed a few here and there, but up over 80 shows over the years, followed them around all over, um, started in New Jersey, drove up to Vermont, hit every show all the way back down to Miami for New Year's Eve. Um, Thank you, mom, for even letting that happen, <laughs> like at, at 16, 17 years old. And that threw me into a really artistic community. You have a lot of really artistic people in the fish community that are out selling art. And I became just really, and I, I fell in love with screen printed concert posters they are such a killer art form and they have been since like you go back and you look at, at old books from the summer of love with Jefferson airplane and the dead. And th these posters were phenomenal. And these guys were drawing these and cutting things out and, and using, you know, copiers to make these weird effects and stuff that now I can just go to Photoshop and click a button or whatever. <laughs> but you but know, the culture, they created the, such the, a, organic grassroot culture it and was it, its own community and you then, could yeah. thrive you could 
get your meals, your art, your clothes, everything. And with every show you went, you knew more people. And again, here we are. I'm catching on to that wave. It all comes back to, to catching them waves and got really creative then. I remember, I think, it, actually, funny enough, it was 20 years ago last week, did my first run of hats. Mm. And we did them to take and sell in the parking lot at, uh, in Coney Island, New York for a fish show. No way. And went out there and walked around like a peddler, you know, selling goods. And we sold them all. And I was pumped. Like, we created that. Me and my friend, we did this together. We created it. We walked around. We sold them. And I think that was, you know, a, a big inspiration to the whole thing was was being in that community and seeing just so many different walks of life. Um, and it's all very encouraging, welcoming. And it's like... It, oh, it, super it's, positive. I feel so late to the game sometimes with particular things like... I've always loved the Beatles, but I was never like, I'd never had like that click moment where like, oh, I get it sort of thing. Yeah. And then even with like Grateful Dead and Fish and bands kind of like that, or even bands locally in our area, like Guavatron, yeah. that just fucking jam and rip. And it's oh, like- Oh, Heavy I, Pets. Yeah, Heavy like, Pets. Oh my heavy God, pets, Heavy Pets, dude. dude. Yeah. Number like South Florida, Heavy Pets, killer. And there is that I get it moment. Yeah, it, it, it clicks. You're like, whoa. Like, have you- you're, 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 You've watched Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Come on. Of course. Dan, Dan and DeVito zoom in. We're just like, oh, I get it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, there's an ongoing joke within the fish community of when is the moment you got it? You attended shows, but when was the moment that you you really got it? You know? So when was the moment you got it? Um, Moment I got it, I have to say, was first show about three or four songs in thinking I knew the songs. I'm going to really date myself right now that I had downloaded off of LimeWire. Oh, dude. <laughs> Shout out to the OG Shout, yeah. pirates yeah, of dude. the internet. Absolutely. Um, burning discs in the little paper decals that I would put on top dude, and fuck date, them. Fuck dating yourself. You don't know LimeWire. Do your research. Yeah, it's like, that's it. You know, what was the other one? Pirate Bay or whatever. Uh, yeah, Pirate but Bay, LimeWire. Uh, Napster. Uh, yeah, yeah, Napster and... You know, thinking that I knew a bunch and seeing these songs um, take on a life of their own. And this three minute song that I knew is now like eight to 10 minutes in and the tempo's changed and it's now in a different chord. And everybody around you is in that same moment. And that moment is being improvised. And that was the moment I got it was realizing that I'm in the Philadelphia spectrum. And I mean, God, I don't even know how many thousands of people that place holds. And every single person's brain was in the same spot. And it was like this intertwined web that was happening. And even the band in interviews will talk about this, this energy that happens back and forth. And, and, you know, you play music, you know, there's that old play to your audience type thing. And you know the energy of the crowd. You can feel if like you, you're doing this song, but really they're kind of needing a little bit of this energy mm -hmm. and they pull and play off of that. And that was my moment was looking around and realizing that everybody else had surrendered to the flow and was living in that moment. And I think it was just like on from Donkey Kong. It's yeah, it was just, that was it from there. It's it's such a beautiful special moment, exactly. And those are things that you just can't really go back and get. You just kind of no. take with you, and it's sh and the fact that it's shared with some people too. That's why there's something about live shows. It's just live in the moment. I mean, especially I mean, not to really date yourself, but what year do you think that was? Choose. 2003 or four 2003 or four so you're talking 20 years ago yeah and now fast forward a whole pandemic and everything else in between that's happened and now with the digital age and going to today and now seeing stuff like that too and you can still look around it's like like the band like the local bands we even just our regional bands i should say at this point that we just named with yeah like heavy pets and guavatron going to one of their shows i mean with as many distractions that we have now in life and just in general of like our personal lives or just the stuff that's on our phone and you can look up and see everybody just in the moment a shared moment like that it's just something it's it's like capturing lightning in a bottle it is it's a it's a very um 
it's something we're quickly losing at the same time because you're you're going to get two different crowds. You're going to get that moment where you look up and everybody's in that same energy or you look up and every single person's watching it through their phone and I'm like, hey, I'll take your ticket to go up there. Yeah. You can watch it on YouTube later if yeah. you want, you know. <laughs> Um, but it, it is a special thing. It is that lightning in a bottle and it's, it's any kind of concert. It's not just, not even just the fish shows. I mean, the, the improvising of them is what really just brings in a special experience each night. And that's why we were able to do so many shows in a row was everybody in that community, like they have a song that they're chasing mm -hmm. and it could take you two shows it could take you 50 shows or you may never see it. God, that's such the truth. It, it, you will see somebody cry at a fish concert because they had chased hearing Tila for the first time live. And they have been trying and trying and they've flown all over the country. They've been to California, New York, Vermont, never heard it. And then those first chords hit and you can't control emotion. It finally happened. And yet yeah, to everybody, it might just be a dumb song, but it, it was something that you chased. It was a goal you set for yourself. It was, it was a passion. It was a fuel. It's, it's just like being an avid sports fan and yeah. rooting for that, you know, for that player or that team, your, your fish always wins, you know, like yeah. there isn't, there's no such thing as a bad fish show. Um, there's extraordinary ones, but there's no such thing as a bad one. And I think that opened my mind as well to, creative outlets and being more open to the world and viewing the world in an artistic manner. Again, with my cartoon. With an brain. open mind. Yeah. With a very open mind. Um, you see everything. Yeah. I mean, you have everything from prep school hippies to I'm pretty sure that dude's homeless. How did he get in here? But, at that prep moment. school hippies is a really funny <laughs> I, I, I thought about it a little bit more but I'm like damn that's true it's yeah true. we have prep school hippies yeah. you know um dead in company that's that you can't even get tickets because that's who bought them all up yeah um but at that moment during that peak of the music you're all family no matter what your monetary level is no matter what your social status is you're all in it together at that moment for one reason. And I think that's what we do with art yeah. as well. I mean, you know, art's always in the eye of the beholder. Um, some people love it. Some people, some people hate it with a piece of art. You know, for me, I always loved Pollock. 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 And some people will look and be like, it's, it's splattered. Yeah. It's, it's not art. That shit was brilliant. Like it, it was mind expanding. It was fantastic. You know, um, I did my college thesis on Roy Lichtenstein, comic book style with all the halftones. Little did I know I'd be printing t-shirts with halftones in them. Life's full circle. It all just keeps coming back around, you know? That's, yeah, that that's the truth there. But I mean, e well, hey, even mentioning college, so traveling around with fish and then now you end up in college. How'd you make that connection? So again, dad lived down here. Mom lived in New Jersey. Um... Came down for three or four nights of fish, New Year's Eve, Miami, and my brother lived down here for a long time. Mm -hmm. I have an older brother, and he hooked me up with some of his friends. He called me. He was like, hey, look, little bro's coming to town. Can he crash on your couch? He's going to see a bunch of fish shows. Um, you know, what a what a typical setup. You know? Yeah, yeah. My brother <laughs> wants to crash on couch for fish shows and ended up staying on one of my brother's uh, best friend's couches and the sh shows ended the next day. He's like, you want to go fishing? Sure. Went out on the boat, went out fishing the next day, went out and hit old key lime house, just doing all kinds of stuff. And I was like, you know, I'm not feeling New Jersey. I would, I want to come back here. Um, and I see that I can do that. I'm, I'm meeting people here. And so I stayed way longer than I should have, <laughs> um, you know, I was supposed to be here for like four nights for shows and drive back home. And then I ended up staying for, you know, about a week and a half, went back up North, stayed there for a little bit, fast forward, loaded a moving truck, moved down here, got my first studio apartment. Um, and the rest is history. I've been in Florida ever since now, you know, 
I'm married with with a, an, a to an amazing woman with an amazing son. I'm a business owner in the community, and then yeah, I guess at the end of the day, it all happened because some damn hooligan drove down the highway to go see some fish, some shows. fish shows. That's, That's crazy. it. And know? yeah, so that could have ended this way or that yeah, way. <laughs> I mean, life is full of forks in the road, and that one turned to me coming here, and it. it made a better life for me it's seriously beautiful what like the creative journey can bring you with an open mind and just kind of independent endeavors too where it's just destiny like destiny unbound this you is where my go for exactly it. this is where my passion is this is where it's leading me this is where i like this is where i don't like and this is what i want out of life too um but kind of going into the college phase so you were telling me before that i didn't even know that you went to um art college so or yeah, got a degree went, in art. Yeah, I did. Um, so I majored in fine art. Oh, let, me get you, let me get you on that mic, kind of oh, tilt it a little yeah. bit like that. Boom. I majored in fine art at Santa Fe College here in Gainesville um, with a minor in photography. Hey, oh, hey, dude, I didn't even know that. Yeah, nice. I minored in photography. Um, forever, my favorite teacher was my photography teacher. He was he was killer, man. He was he was a great dude, and his advice was amazing. What for? What made you say um, that? He was like, everybody's had that rebel teacher mm -hmm. who, you know, it's um, the old movie scenario where he kind of like kicks up on the desk. Yeah. He's like, don't ever tell anybody that I told you guys to do this. What is but, dead, dead Poet Society? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like Dangerous Minds, Dead mm -hmm. Poet Society. Like he's kicking the chair backwards and sitting down kicking it with you. But I'll always remember talking to him. And I think that the piece of advice that he gave for photography was more of a piece of life advice. And he said, the best shots you'll ever get will more than likely come from behind a sign that says, do not enter, no trespassing. Basically, you're going to have to cross a line from time to time if you want to push things to the next level. And it was a really good piece of advice it, from an outside closed view it might have sounded like he was like go trespass and do some urban exploration mm -hmm. and and that's it and take some pictures but i really do feel like it might have been a little bit more of life advice and of push the boundaries don't don't just settle just keep pushing you know it's and and that dude was just great i felt like i learned a lot from him and a lot of my photos were taken behind do not trespass signs, a lot of train yards photographing graffiti. <laughs> um, I was a stickler for hopping into train yards and photographing graffiti um, and doing, you know, urban exploration photos and things like that. And he just, he really resonated with me. And that's, um, I also got to take an elective that year and did screen printing. Oh, and so that was the first time I got to, you know, work with emulsion and, and making my own screens. And I went right for making posters. Um, not really something anybody, anybody does a lot of, they're too easy to print out of our big printers nowadays. Um, but having that skill and that level of that foundation is just so important. Oh, it was killer. I made my first set of posters and, um, I made the heavy pets posters and I took them to a show. Oh, no shit. Yeah. I took them to a show, um, in Boca and at the funky Buddha at the funky Buddha. Yes. And I made, they were like one color screen prints on some heavy stock paper I got from Michael's or something. It was super bootleg and I sold them and people were pumped about them. Like it was, it was killer. I had now started giving back to that scene that I loved so much. Yeah. And, and yeah, I made, I think my first like real screen printed poster besides like making a couple like Pac-Man prints and stuff to test it out was I did a heavy pets poster. So that's, that's epic. Again, full circle. That, that's seriously full <laughs> circle. I mean, even like the life advice you got early with your photography professor, it's cause I always, yeah, I, exactly. Outside looking in, someone could look at that and be like, he's telling you to break the law. He's telling you to do that. Exactly. This. He's telling you to do that. And that's kind of not really the way to look at something in an, an artistic like value of way. I mean, because I always tell people when people ask me for photography advice or something like that, you have to have your own moral compass, first of all. Oh, yeah. If you feel like something is just not sitting well with you, don't approach it. Have a little bit of situational awareness, too. But... 
if you want the best out of a, really anything in life too, you have to push yourself. You have to make yourself you uncomfortable. You have to get out of your comfort zone. And that's zone. the only way to grow. I mean, do you, you know who Hunter Hutchings is? I do. Yeah. He, yeah. Like, one, yeah. One of the greatest things he said is just like, I don't know. I just love to put myself in these awkward situations and then I just kind of f figure it out and I can just feel myself doing that. And I'm like, dude, that's really good advice because that's the way to grow and that's like <laughs> well it's instinct you yeah, act yeah, yeah. Out, you know it's it's primal it's like a muscle you have to it, really kind of develop and yeah grow it. it is and a lot of people you know they're so afraid to put themselves out there or, or afraid of failure or afraid of embarrassment that they won't put themselves in an uncomfortable situation or or a bit of a scary situation but to feel that little bit of fear to me is to know you're alive you know, yeah. I mean, do you just want to get in the lazy river and float all the day or, or do you want to get in the wave pool and shake things up a little bit? Yeah. Do you want to sit in that lazy river? Eventually someone's going to piss on you. Exactly. Or do you want to get exactly and just yeah. float away and just wrinkle and just become, you know, nothing. Or do you want to get out there and do you want to push the limit a little bit? And do you want to try to take things to the next level? You know, you have people who they just have this mindset of, it's sad that they think they'll never make a difference. They're mm -hmm. just going to go through their life daily nine to five and just, just kind of phone their way through it. And then you have other people who they want to stir it up. Yeah. They want to get in that uncomfortable situation and learn how that situation works and what makes those gears turn and then we take that and that's our fuel. Even those we... people, even those people with the nine to five though, they, are just they want something for themselves. They want something else too. They like the nine to five. They like because everyone's life being so personable and different. But they're like, there's something. I there's something else that's missing. Yeah. What is missing? Sort of thing. And then it's just just the simple, the hardest things are doing step one, two, and three. And then everything else kind of has that flow with it too. It, but again, but again, the whole thing with kind of what the, your professor said. The best results you're going to probably find is when you push yourself. One, I remember when I was just getting into photography. One guy told me, he's like, you won't start really liking your work until you take about 10,000 photos. And I'm like, that's insane. That's so much. Oh, my gosh. Until and you then, do your first two shoots that you shot at like 1,000 photos to <laughs> yeah. keep two. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Brain spray, baby. Yeah. That's it. That's that's it. <laughs> the um, beauty of digital. But you're probably shooting film and uh the, the uh, when you're in college, right, or a little bit of both? I did both actually. Dark room is killer. Bring back the dark room. Yeah. That was those are, those are such important foundations and skill sets. Where sometimes I don't know if people look at the creatives and the arts, where it's like, okay, you are just a designer, and you th that's the skills that you have. But everything just full circle comes back, and you're like, oh, I pulled these skills from here. This conversation I had like really inspired me to kind of move me forward in this oh, direction yeah. too. And then like. You know, you you shoot on film from time to time. Have you? I'm, I'm really trying to get better. Have at you it, yeah. done exposing in the dark room? On I haven't. No. All right. So I was very lucky that at that time, I don't know if they still do, but Santa Fe still had a dark room to expose our God, photos. I, I hope they do. And it was special. Like we just see those on movies now. That's that's yeah. not something that we really get to do. And there were certain kids who were always in the dark room. You know that that was their thing. And that was my first real photo manipulation where they were taking and they were changing negatives and stuff and exposing them that way. And that opened a whole different like eye to what photography can be and to a little bit of abstract photography and things like that. We did a lot of digital. That's where I got my first DSLR mm -hmm. and all that. But film was definitely special in the, you know, the the toxic chemicals in the dark room and everything and, and dripping them and hanging them to dry yeah. and seeing it, you know, everybody's taking a Polaroid and, yeah. and on the shake. <laughs> that and doesn't really do anything. It doesn't here. actually <laughs> do anything. Yeah. We just all started doing it um, because of a song. And then, <laughs> and then, but that, that, that moment where you watch the Polaroid and the picture comes out that, that moment in the dark room, like, that's a special moment. It's not that click. There it is. Everything today is such instant gratification that I think that that is, it's a big downfall for us is that instant gratification. People are losing patience, man. They just, you know, good things need to simmer. 
they need to be built. They need to they need to take time. I and, and that's that's why I mean there's beauty in film too. It like really forces you to slow down. Um, oh, ah, not the negative. That's kind of where the name came from. Just oh. from the 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 world of film. But um, I like to do these uh, think piece type advertisements, and uh, we just did one for a uh, 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 sixty minute photo, and that was kind of one of the big things I want to kind of hone in on of just like taking time to slow down and really enjoy these moments because it's stuff that's going to be. The, the results that are going to come out, it's going to be like no other. And also with that too, it's really developing your kind of thoughts and just your, your whole process. There's no prey and spray with the, with the, no, there's with a, the film. No, I, can't really, I can't afford it. No. I mean the film prices and it makes you really think about your next action. And, and it, it's not that instant gratification. You don't get to see your results at first. And like a kid on Christmas morning, isn't anticipation of like waiting for something to come? That's a good feeling. It's it's great to be excited. So it's about a something. real feeling. It's a feel. real feeling. And it's like you know they say that um, I, I read that humans are happier when they have like a vacation to look forward to. If you know you're going somewhere in a month or two and you have it all booked and everything, that the human brain is happier because it has that moment to look forward to, and breaking it down into its simplest thought process. Let's go to being a little kid and Christmas coming up. How jazzed were you like the two weeks leading up to Christmas? You didn't know what you were getting or what you were doing, but you knew that that moment was coming and you were happy. I just it. hoped I was on that list. That That's it. I that I was liked. on the list. Nice. That That's it. And, and when I saw that, that was my first thought was, I don't even need the scientific evidence. That's got to be true. Humans are happier when they're anticipating something good in their life. So, you know, creating art, creating music and waiting to see how the public accepts it. Anxiety and anticipation, you know, they'll go hand in hand from time to time, but makes you feel alive. Yeah. You know, the, you got to get that heart, heart beating. You got you got to feel something. So even with you, um, minor in photography, major in... Fine arts. Fine, fine arts. So the anticipation from there, where does it go from there? We like, I don't even know like how we're like kind of going with the flow. Cause I remember from me being in kind of when I was in college, kind of knew exactly what I wanted to do with my life, but I didn't have it so f at a, like a fine point. So I didn't know for something like with you, if you feel like you had it all figured out. Well, I so you had to take the fine art to get into the graphic design program, which at the time pissed me off because I was young yeah. and I, I wanted instant gratification yeah, and I yeah. just wanted to get a degree. But then I realized that, you know, you need to be able to appreciate the roots before you can add to the rest of it. And then I went into doing my, my graphic design classes after I did fine art. And I knew that I wanted to do graphic design. I knew that I wanted to work in the print industry with vehicle wraps, with signs, with t-shirts. I didn't, I didn't want a um, like web design job or anything like that. I never had any okay. interest in it. I always wanted like working with your hands. I like working with my hands and I, I love stickers. Like I love <laughs> making stickers. And I mean, who doesn't love getting like a kick-ass sticker to slap on there's something. something about it there's still something, there's something about it still and you know like um i knew that's what i wanted to do i got bored a couple times in school like i don't know i'm more of a out and about i gotta kind of get up and go type person but i definitely learned a lot from it and i knew what i wanted to do now i didn't come right out of college like into a great job and started doing it i think after college, I worked at a like a franchise sign shop, and I I did some design work there, and did some table work there, building signs, and and moved up nicely through there. But I'm not like really a corporate type person. It wasn't the fit for me. Um, ended up swinging hammers in Florida sun. Oh, and, see, that will build oh, character man. real quick. That'll that'll kick your ass into gear of what you want to do. Like you know. But Dude. stuff like that, you probably have so much admiration and respect. Oh, 100%. You're like, I, I did one roofing job when I was like oh. 16, and I look at those roofers, I'm like... <laughs> yeah, like, God bless you guys out there on a Saturday in the middle of the day, just oh, yeah. building, you know, throwing up shingles and doing all these things. It's crazy. And I think that doing those kinds of jobs 
made me appreciate my job because passion. I have passion for what I do, especially like certain projects. When somebody comes in and they, they tell me something, um, I, I get like hyped about it. And I think that it becomes contagious from time to time where like, I'm like, okay, I see, I see where you're going with yeah. this. What if we like, you know, turned it into this color and, and went that way with it. And then all of a sudden they get really pumped because I'm pumped about their project and we start feeding off of each other. So I knew that I wanted to come out of school and like do stuff like that. Um, it took a little while to get where I was going, working other places for other people and learning sponge, 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 just learning everything, you know, um, I knew how to run all my programs. I knew how to run my printers. I knew how to do all that. But then comes the part of like customer relations and, and doing the businessman shit. Yeah. yeah the, 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 exactly. The business side of it, because it's just so funny, like understanding like your background a little bit more growing up with just like really as a genuine artist and appreciation for art, not really growing up as far as like, I mean, business, 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 business. No. How can I make a book? How can I make this book into this, this, this? It's more of just like the appreciation of art and you blink. It's like, oh, art and creativity brought me here. So where did the business side really kind of start coming into the art and the creativity side? Because it's even like with me, I just, I, it's, it's so important. I even tell people who like, people are like, I don't like, I don't like dealing with this. I really just want to focus on the art and stuff too, but it's so important. It's so important to understand it because you'll get fucked or someone oh. will just take advantage of oh, you. All cylinders have to fire right yeah. for, for everything to move right. For mm. sure. I mean, you know, every gear has got to be in its right place. And I, the business has been a dream for a long time. Me and I mean, none of this. Not one thing that I, I have right here would be possible without my wife. Amen. I hear I, I'm right there with you, boy. Every good man is an even better woman. Cheers. And yeah, I mean, to the wives who support us out here living our dreams, doing our doing our thing. Um, Jill and I talked about this a lot. And it had always, you know, we were always on the same page. We would like be sitting on the beach talking about one day we're going to, we're going to have our own shop and it's going to be this cute little family business. And I'm, you're going to do exactly what you do now, but it's going to be your atmosphere, your vibe, your, your thing. And we used to talk about like, then when the business grows, we're going to get an old VW bus and that's <laughs> going to be our, our shop car, you know, and it's going to have surfboards on top of it. And that's going to be our way. And it had just been something we talked about and talked about, and, you know, it was a dream. It, it, it was just a dream. And but a dream that probably just grew more of a, like a concrete image in your head, well, something that just... For every year that I did it for somebody else, that dream just became more and more because as I got older and I started to become responsible... <laughs> accountability. <laughs> yeah, accountability, responsibility. I started to look at the business side of it as well. And I started looking at... So you can be the best at what you do, right? I don't care what you do. You can be the best at what you do. If you have no people skills, you suck at what you do. Because how are you going to draw a, a customer base? Where are your clients coming from? If everybody walks out like that dude was a prick, you know, it just doesn't work. And so I started seeing that having like people skills and getting out and having these conversations and stuff. So then I started looking at the business side of it. Now this dream starts to kind of take more, more of a little bit of a reality because it's not just, oh, we're going to build this cool building and we're going to bump our tunes and make our signs and make our stickers and get some customers. Now it was like, well, no, we can drum up business by doing this. And we already know these people and we get out there and, you know, maybe part of that even comes back to the very beginning of our conversation of me and my best friend traveling around meeting strangers all the time in this community and not really and, you're networking. Yeah. <laughs> like, but we were networking yeah. in a way because when we got somewhere, they saved a parking spot for us. So we didn't have to walk 10 blocks or, you know, it, and you were meeting people and I was learning these social skills and that I didn't even realize I was picking up on. 
And I was learning to relate with all walks of life. So, you know, doing this, I get all walks of life. I'll get, I've worked with major corporations down to startup businesses, one man shows. So I think over the course of the years, that dream just started to become a little bit more real, a little bit more realistic. Mm -hmm. And finally, um, I realized that the truth is there was one thing that was keeping the dream from, from actually materializing. Which is what? Fear. The leap of faith. That's kind of what I was about to... I was about, scared. I was, I was about to ask you, but I do, I do want to just hone in on one thing when I kind of mentioned as far as like networking in a very kind of just like hokey pokey way, but you realize you're networking without realizing you're networking because you come some you come from such an authentic place where you're able to talk to the, the preppy hippies from private school yep. or even the people that are like, I don't know if you're homeless or you're just kind of chilling, but it's not really just putting on a fake mask where you're just appeasing everybody in the crowd. It's really coming with an open mind and just having a genuine connection with people because of a very common denominator of well, just we're here, family. That's it. Yeah. But it's, it's like, you know, it's like the, the kid in high school who could bounce between all the tribes. You know, yeah. like all the all the high schools had their cliques. Yeah. We'll, we'll go back to mean girls. Yeah. You know, right? <laughs> so everybody had their cliques, but there was like people who could bounce between yeah. them all and and be able to talk to all walks of life. Why do you have to corner yourself into like one little thing? You don't just have to be that thing. We're all just human. Exactly. You know, like exactly. I think that's being forgotten more and more every day. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's like a fear of judgment. I don't know if it's a fear of just really knowing who you and that's another thing you're like your own identity of like knowing who you are i mean everyone's got their own journey with it and i mean i've sp spoken to people who are in their 40s and then i mean especially with the way the world kind of cracked down with the pandemic and stuff oh and yeah really people had to look into themselves and be like who am i and where do i play into what's currently going on um there's a little bit of fear there but it kind of exactly with what what you're going back to what you said i like to call like that leap of faith where it's like I know the steps to get there. There's a lot of uncontrollable room here of where could this go? So kind of walk me through some of those steps where of working design, knowing your passion, knowing your skill set, seeing the dream of where you want to be. So how did that kind of play in fruition? So I, I worked at another business for nine years, almost a decade. I loved working there. I really did. I learned a lot. It was arguably where I learned more about business than anything, but I needed more, you know, that constant yearning for more, mm -hmm. that, that constant um, feeling for growth growth, yeah, and, and not wanting to just tread water. I, I wasn't happy with just nine to five. And here's the thing is I'm not a nine to five person. And I think you can relate to this. Like when we go home, we don't turn off. We, we might turn off for dinner and be present then, but that laptop's opening up. And even when I worked for somebody else, my brain was still always on it. So there we have one thing. I'm constantly doing this anyway, so I should be doing it for myself if my brain's always going to be on it. But, you know, going back to that, I worked there for a long time. I really did enjoy it. I, I learned a lot. Um, and the dream just, it was always in my head of like, man, I, I want to come in. I want to unlock my door and do my thing. And I want to meet my customers my way, but I was scared. And then you're taking multiple leaps. So one, I had a good, good, solid job. That's, you know, good financial income. You're going to be giving that up and you're going to risk it all. When you start your own business, you're rolling the dice hard. Let's start with that. Cause everybody has that fear. That's, that's one, but the big, big fear, failure. It took me a while to admit that. I don't know why I couldn't see it. I was not chasing the dream as hard as I could because in a way I didn't want to get there yet because I was afraid to fail if I did do it. But I would rather try and fail than live with what if. I cannot live with what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if. That is just not who I am. You know, I mean, it's, it is most literally the leap of faith 
And let's face it, if you're going to gamble on somebody, who would you rather gamble on besides yourself? You know, I mean, my destiny is in my own hands. That's it. I'm going to work and I'm going to get it done. If it means I'm in here till three o'clock in the morning to get my job done for my client and make sure they're happy, I'm going to do that shit. And that's it. And I'm not going to worry about anything else. I will go home. I will have dinner with my family. I will give hugs and kisses, tell everybody I love them. When they go to bed, I'm going back to work. And that's back to the grind. Um, the fear, I could not get over it. I, I, I couldn't do it. And here we go. The strong woman steps in. That's it. And she told me, I believe in you. I know you can do this. Dude, it's like little things like that where like I look back and you can like weep and wallow in your own self. So we look around. It's like, I have like real support. It's not people just gassing me up. Oh, because no, this is legit. Their family and their friends. Yeah. Like, there's like there's there's something real. And I believe what they're saying to me. Why don't I believe in myself? It, and that's that was like my spark. It's almost there like was, it's almost like flipping. It's just like I'm doing this for like for you. And then you almost realize and just like I can actually do this. And then you just it's like little like even back when you're 16, dude. And then it's like come work in my shop. Homeboy said, come help me out. That was him having, you know, faith in me. Because he worked there nine to five. So if he brought in somebody who did a really crappy job, that reflected upon him. Mm. He believed in me to that day, you know, all the way back then. But it was really Jill and my family, you know, um, my, my mom, my dad, they believed in me. My mother-in-law and father-in-law, they're amazing people. They believed in me. And so now I have this whole group of people who wholeheartedly believe I can make this come true. It's my turn. You know, I need to believe in me and I need to go for it. And, and so we took the leap of faith. Um, and I am happier than I've ever been. Where did the name come from? So, um, we kicked around a bunch of names. We had like, they, they always had something nautical. They were always, you know, just like any couple like laying around with the dream, we, we would throw names yeah. back and forth, you know, and it would be like, oh, Surfside or something like that. And we couldn't come up with the name. And when I say we, I say Jill and I laying in bed at night talking about this, you know, the real quality time of being married. Mm -hmm. It's like when everything's calmed down and the night's ended and you're laying there shooting the shit and, you know, you're hanging out with your best friend just... Just talking. Those moments. The, those are the moments I live for. They're the moments you live for. You know these moments. They're everything. They're they're the best. And we're talking about it. And we're going to do it. Like, this is it. We got to come up with the name. We're going to go on Sunbiz. And we're going to LLC this. Hell yeah. You yeah. know, like, let's make this real. And we kept kicking names back and forth. And now I don't even remember what all of them were. I think I probably have them written down in a notebook somewhere or something. But I will never forget, Jill was like, we just need something with like that. It's got to have like that coastal vibe to it. And it was like, <laughs> bah, there it is. It, it was, that was the moment was we were trying to come up with names. And while deciding what style the name was going to have, she was like, it's just got to have that coastal vibe. and. That was the moment. Like, yeah. it, it, that that was it. That's where the name came from. So again, strong woman. She named the business. <laughs> <laughs> she she said that, and I was like, "That's it." Like that, and that. My favorite thing, and it happens often. I it it's funny to me, but I love it. Customers come in for the first time, and they're like, "Man, it really is a vibe." And you said it this morning. You know, you walked in. I got Mac bumping. I got. Nice candle smells nice. We got the cool art on the background. The printers are running. It doesn't feel like some industrial cog like machine just running. It's got a vibe about it. Like it's a, it's, it's taken on a life of its own. And that's it. It, it was the perfect it's, name. It's got such a homey feeling that's it. to it. When you walk in, it's because it's a business ran and led by an artist too. The, and it, and it's got a homey feel because this is my second home. I mean, if we look up right now, there's my, <laughs> there's, there's my little dog sleeping in her bed. My little Daisy over here. She's my shop dog. I bring her to work with me every day. Um, you know, one of the first things when we came in here and we like painted and, 
it's super exciting. You know, when you rent your building and you find the right building and you're painting it and you're picking your colors. I think one of the very first things we did was built Daisy's Corner. Oh, <laughs> like after we painted, it was right to the pet store and got her bed and, and everything and laid it over there. And I was like, I'm bringing my little multi poo with me to work every day. I saw you at the coffee shop this morning. Yeah. Golden Juicery, what's up? Um, and I come walking in with my little dog under my yeah. under my hand, you know, and she goes everywhere with me. This is my home away from when I, when I was working in there this morning, all I see is like the silhouette because it was in the morning. So I just see like you, I see big beard, hat, walking with a dog like this. I'm like, who is this? I'm like, oh. Yeah, that's it. And like, I mean, seriously, she goes everywhere with me. Everybody laughs because I'm like, you know. Same as you, long hair. I mean, I noticed a str- I mean, that guy that came up to you and said, what's up? I, I don't know if you knew him or no, whatever. Yeah, exactly. That dude was. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, it was just, and you know what? Daisy's a hell of a salesperson. All right. Cause I'll go somewhere and I got her and everybody wants to come cute, pet the cute little dog. And then they're like, Oh, what do you do? And, it just goes into it. Daisy made another sale. They weren't coming over to talk to my big old bearded The face. secrets of sales. The secret of success is carry around an adorable dog. Interesting. Um, yeah. And so like built a second home. I mean, you're going to spend, there's no 40 hours when you start your own business. No, you, you, you leave the nine to five to work the 24 seven. Exactly. Yes. And everybody told me that. So you might as well build a really nice house for yourself if it's going to be your second home. Absolutely. And that's the the vibe we put <laughs> together. <laughs> so now worked. building the vibe of what you have um and you it's what's it's been like over it's been 2 years. We're coming up on 2 years. Damn. Yeah, and it feels like a blink of an eye. That's for sure. So the work you've done from day 1 to now, I know you're kind of sharing a little bit with me that like, cause I, we I haven't, we haven't caught up in so long or yeah. some of the jobs you're sharing. I'm like, dude, it sounds like business is moving and grooving. Yes. So what are some cool jobs that you've done? It's also fun looking at your social and just be like, holy shit, you got 8,000 followers since last yes, time so I saw totally, you. <laughs> totally went viral. Never saw that happening with a, with a clip that I did, um, wrapping it, a car. Like, I, I, I have so much admiration and appreciation for it because it's just I remember the stuff that we've talked about. Just like, ooh, like, just like I remember you asked me, like, what should I do with social? I'm like, let me uh, just kind of document and film what you're doing because, in my opinion, it's just like if you can. Off- I mean, you're such an authentic person. You always keep it real. I mean, that's the thing. You could talk to a business suit guy with a billion dollars. You could talk to someone like me, who just and like off I'm going to talk to you the same. The same. That's way. the that's- thing. And it, it's something you said earlier. It's not putting on a mask. Yeah. Just be you. Yeah. If they like you, they're gonna want to go with you. If they don't, cool. You'll be okay. Guess what? You didn't have that client yesterday and you were all right. Be you. Don't put on a mask. You know, like it's it's, it's better to be yourself. <laughs> it is. It's gotta be exhausting for people to like try to keep up that facade with everybody, like, oh, oh shit. It's, yeah, up. yeah, right. Rob's coming in, you know, be different. It's no, I am who I am unapologetically. <laughs> so what, um, like, yeah, so it's like some of like the levels of the jobs and stuff. Like so, what yeah, like, like doing, I mean, also thank you for the stickers that you you gave me too. Of course, yeah. Yes. And, you know, I'm doing big jobs, like really big jobs. Keep an eye out, big stuff coming. Um, I'm doing like bigger jobs than I ever thought that I would do on on a really large scale that I just just got done all the way down to like little sticker runs for, for local artists. And I'm linking up with some really great business. I mean, of course, we we know some of them that are like, foundation and roots for me um we got it all over the table here ethan and i we we took this journey at right around the same time he was building golden juicery right when i was like getting ready to put in my notice oh very cool so him and i really linked up quickly because we were we were taking that leap of faith together at the same time so you know doing stuff with um with golden juicery and um I've been recently working with DV8 Motorsports, which is huge. Um, they work on killer cars and them sending people my way is, it's awesome. Um, I'm working with another local company, a neon company where I'm wrapping all the signs and then they lay neon on them. Oh, nice. And we're staying super busy with that as well. And it's cool because these signs are going all over the world. Like, you know, that they're literally getting shipped all over for big parties. We, I think we did some for like Super Bowl parties and stuff. And just knowing that it was in my building and then it's headed there is really cool. Um, the, the client list, it's growing and it's growing nicely. And, you know, the thing is, 
I really like my clients and, and it's nice because I get to know a lot of them like family. And what happens is when you form that bond, they trust you. And when you have trust, I, I am in charge of making sure their business looks good. When Guanabanas calls me and wants me to do all of their shirts for both of their restaurants, that's them putting all of their faith in me. And that means a lot to me. And it's you because know? you've been authentic and real from the gate. Because I'm real with them. Exactly. That's it. And that's, I, and that's attracting the clients that you really want. So it's even just like from another standpoint, why put work out that the clients you don't really necessarily want to attract or even like your personality that you don't really want to attract to? Yeah. Surround yourself with like-minded people. Surround yourself with happy people, with people who are really into what they're doing and life is going to be good. You know, also my, I think my honesty is what a lot of customers like about it too, because I will be the first one to tell you that's not a good idea. Don't do that. Don't waste your money. I might be screwing myself out of a sale, but do you want that sale of them picking up you know, a wrap and it looks terrible. I mean, you probably like sleep, you ugly. probably sleep better at night with that too. So, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, I never, not really totally related to this. I was selling one of my cameras, Facebook marketplace. Of course, people were like give you 20 bucks. I'm like, yeah, go pound sand. Yeah. And people were like, Oh, this is a great camera. One guy called me and he was asking about, it. he's like, I'm doing this podcast. I want, I'm like, this is not the camera for you. It's got a 30 minute limiter. Cause you're going to be behind it, like poking it every time that you want to do it and stuff. So he's like, Oh my God, thank you so much. And I'm like, also, if you have this budget, maybe I'd recommend buying this as a brand new camera, which it doesn't have a 30 minute limiter. He's like, dude, thank you so much. I'm like, yeah, you just and you kind of, I'm like, have to do I that. Have to do that. I could've, you could have sold that and walked yeah. away. Like, ha, 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 ha. But why? Yeah. Like, why? Why for some, a little bit of financial Everybody's no. ready to do everybody dirty just to get one step ahead. And like, you, you weren't becoming an overnight millionaire, you know, d by doing that, but you know, doing something by yourself may get you a little faster, but doing something authentically together may bring you farther. So kind of even relating back to you being able to kind of work with different clients that are attracted to you and then that you have like all this creative freedom and trust in you. But I mean, I would imagine it's probably like a nice bouncing forth relationship, not just someone coming to you and you're like, this is exactly what you want to do. Oh, oh no. Okay everything is a collaboration. I mean, I will get certain people who come in and they're like, I don't know what to do and, and I'll help them. I will sit down and help them. But everything is a collaboration. Like collaborative projects are always the best because one, I, I need to get into a stranger's brain and figure out what they, what they like, you know, it, it, there's so many different styles out there and what their style is so I can help get there. But we'll bounce stuff back and forth. I'm like, send me some photos of something you saw that you thought was really cool. We're not going to copy it. But after they sent me three or four pictures that they were like, oh, I love this. And I love that. I'm like, okay, so, you know, this is your style. You really like clean, like wispy or, okay, you got a little bit of a more hard edge style where you want a little bit of grit to it. And it, it helps open that up of, I, I truly believe if you do not get to know your client a little bit you're not doing the best job you can do for them. Yeah, I couldn't do uh, more. You know, I mean, getting to know somebody and taking 15 minutes out of your day to just sit and shoot the shit with them to get to know them a little bit. You know, I'll have somebody come in and they're like, I need to get a name for my boat. Okay, cool. What do you want to name it? And they'll come up with something. All right, do you want an illustration to go along with it? Ah, I don't know. Okay, do you fish? Do you scuba dive? Do you go to Peanut, Al Peanut Island and drink beers? What do you do? That's going to lead us our first way. Have a seat. Let's just kick it and talk for a couple minutes. Nine out of 10 times but when that conversation is done, I know exactly which way to go for that client and what's going to make them happy. You got your serious fisherman guy who it's got to look tough. He's out here to bring in them big fish. and Or you got the, the weekender who's got a blender hooked up on their boat to go make margaritas at peanut island you know and you're going to be playful you're going to be silly yeah. and and why so serious everybody's so serious about everything and you know I, it, that's something i really really pride myself on is taking time to get to know my customers i mean you know I, over a year ago i i had a guy walk in never seen him in my life and i was working late i had music going in the garage and he came walking in and he was like, yeah, I need to get
get a jet ski lettered. I was like, ah, or, or wrapped. He okay. said, and I was like, Oh, I, I don't wrap jet skis, man. Or I don't wrap wave runners was the exact <laughs> word I said to him. And, and I will wrap wave runners, but at that point in time, I just, it wasn't something I was interested in. And he was like, no, I didn't say wave runners. I need to do a jet ski. And I was like, all right, let's talk. I turned the music off, got to talking to him. He was a super chill, really nice dude. I'm like, all right, let's go over your project. Jet skis, wave runners aren't really my thing. Um, fast forward, I've designed it. He's the 10 time world champion freestyle jet ski. Um, like dudes out here busting double backflips in 720s. Ooh. No idea that this guy walks through my door and I'm just like, ah, not my thing, guy. Sorry. And he was like, well, let's look at it. We look at it together. Turns out he creates his own line of jet skis, carbon fiber, nasty two stroke motors. And these things are flipping all over the air and he needed somebody to do the decal kits for him. I said, okay, yeah, I'll do that. Now Lee is one of my good friends. I, I talk to him like every day we've designed the new 2024 kit together. We sat at my desk, oh, wow. pulled up the picture of it and started drawing on the picture of the jet ski. And he's like, you know, move this here. Let's try that there. And this is all from getting to know each other, getting to know each other. And you know what? I almost made my own mistake at that point where I was like, sorry, not my thing, bro. Don't do it. And he was like, well, hold on. Just let's talk about it for a second. And I was probably just like tired or being a grump ass that day yeah. or something, you know, and just didn't want to do it. And now it's like, it's amazing. These things, these jet skis that I'm doing, you'll see them on my Instagram. And you probably never thought in a million years you'd oh, do something like that. No, God, no. And I'm like, so where's this one going? Dubai. That's where's this one going? Epic. Oh, we're doing five. They're going to the world championships and I'm getting pictures and all, all three people on the podium are on skis that were in here that I did the graphics job on. Lee made the ski itself, formed the carbon fiber, did everything, put the motor together. It comes to me, the customer picks it. I'm putting it, you know, putting all the colors on they want. Now these guys are out there shredding on these things and they're all came through here. Like it's, it's really. And cool. looking at that too, it's just like, it's, it's the work. And I feel like I can, you're the same way I am where it's like the work, like my work is able to be represented and seen this way. And it's been enjoyed. It's awesome. Not some sort of like ego driven where it's like, Oh, my thing is here. It's on like this scale of this label of this tag here. But the fact that a relationship kind of sparked and it's kind of brought you to some sort of place where you didn't even know you'd be. Never, never saw that coming and almost pushed it out the door, yeah. you know, and became a, became a friend to boot and we've we've spent countless hours together going over color combinations and and different tweaking designs and stuff and i've done so many of them now like it's it's crazy to me how many i've done i have a vinyl rack in the room of just for that client that's it they're the only people who get that i keep it in stock that way when a customer orders it i can get it ready and so my horizons have expanded from just doing, you know, stickers or just vehicle wraps to creating custom decal kits that are going to go actually into mass production soon. And that started here. Like my hands made that. Yeah. And there's, there's a pride about that. Yeah. And that it's, it's cool. It's, it's really cool when you're driving down the street and you're like, Hey, I did that, you know? Um, yeah. And my kid thinks it's awesome. You know, I mean, that's the it, best. It, yeah. That's so cool. Like he made me a thing at school recently about my dad. And, um, it was, it was adorable, hilarious, everything. And it said, my dad is really good at blank. And he put designing stickers. <laughs> that's I, awesome. I'm okay with that. You know, I'm, I'm good with that. He said, my favorite food was cucumbers. It's, it, it was is that, that true? It is not. No, I eat meat. Um, I, I do like cucumbers, but it was it was adorable because him and I snack on cucumbers together yeah. at, 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 as like a healthy snack. Right. And so he puts, you know, my dad's favorite food is cucumbers. So I'm like, boy, it's steak. Awesome. Put some steak on there, you know. And and um, it's just, it was cool because even he's got that, oh, my dad's so good at making these stickers. And um, last year, his school did a... Um, what is it called? Career day. Okay. 
and he came and he was like, dad, will you do career day? And I was like, no, oh, man, nobody wants to hear about my job. Yeah. Dad, I don't think that they'll want me. And he got me to do it. Um, so I made a ton of stickers, made a couple time lapses of wrapping cars and boats, brought it in. It was great. I am so happy I did it. Almost another missed opportunity because, you know, sometimes when you do something, you, you tend to forget like how cool it is to the outside perspective. Like you go back and see these big printers running and stuff. They're badass. I work with them every day. So it becomes a little bit, you know, different. Um, I did it. The kids absolutely ate it up. They thought it was so cool. They all got a sticker at the end. They thought the video seeing the cars change was awesome. The principal calls me like a week later and she said, I just wanted to let you know how well received your career that's, day that's was. Amazing. And I found out she's like it, that day, Mackay had come home and he was telling me about the other career days. Dude, we got a policeman with a dog running and jumping onto the arm thing. We got coast guard. We got a fireman. This is what you're putting me up against. I'm so happy. That's I didn't... Also it's so yeah. epic. <laughs> yeah. Like I did. I, I'm so happy that they told me after the fact that these were the other jobs that they were going to learn about because all of those are like way more respectable first responder heroes. And you know, my dad's awesome at making stickers, but the world needs stickers too. We need to advertise, you know, and um, I went to go pick him up and like every kid in the first grade had a Coastal Vibe sticker on their water bottle. <laughs> That's good branding. That is was, good brand awareness. Good branding. Now I do all the signage for the school. <laughs> Oh no shit. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's like, exactly. You, you shoo away opportunities and it comes back back. It's like, why is this coming back to me? Okay. Well, interesting. I mean, I, I've said this before, even on my podcast where, um, I got a friend from a musician. I got a text from a musician friend, like, Hey man, there's a, a movie production coming down the Florida, uh, for American pie. I'm thinking like the raunchy American pie series. Yeah. And I'm like thinking, uh, and it's like, well, they need like an actor for this. You want to do it? I'm like, Nah, man, I'm not an actor. Oh, I'm good. I when, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I get a text like a couple hours later. He's like, hey, man, I don't think you realize um, MTV's back in this uh, Paramount, blah, 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 um, and it'll pay you 400 bucks. I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm in. 400 bucks. And then I get a call from like the producer casting person. I sent like a headshot of myself, and that's where I had to like shave my beard and keep this. Like, oh, oh, I, I remember kept, that. I, I kept remember the that look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's where that. this was born. But it was one of the things I said no to, and I show up like, Oh my! This is this is real. This almost is like almost missed that opportunity. Yeah, almost missed that opportunity. Now I could say I was in a movie and I have an IMBD and all this stuff. But not only like the coolness factor of like the outside looking in, but I mean, kind of the things that I took away from it, where I'm like, I'm surrounded by like minded people of just creativity, art, like really goal focused. Like this is what we're working towards. Like the the team effort of working together and then also just like how amazing it was the like the, like the, the american pie song what it was about not the american yeah. pie movie series of just the musician i was appreciative towards and i got that phone call and got a little bit more explained to me um and then just the way they produced it recorded it i mean it was all like filmed on actual film too so See, how yeah how fast technology was going so it again something I initially said no to, and then the boomerang came back to me. And I, I had to sit back and be like, "Why is this coming back to me? Let so me just kind of almost understand." Almost missed opportunity, exactly. Just from now, nah, real quick, responsive no, and going back in our conversation, getting out of your comfort zone a little bit of doing the headshot, and you know, being an actor, <laughs> being an actor, like. <laughs> You know, where you stepped out of the norm to something new. Um, so it it always comes back to that, you know, just expanding, growing. And now look, now you're sitting in front of a camera again. Yeah, you're always right. the guy behind the camera. <laughs> I mean, we've known each other enough years. I've seen you shooting around town and, um, you know, doing photography around town. I, I mean, I met you when you were playing music. Yeah. And, and now you got the podcast and you had the movie. That's killer. And you say you... You stepped out of the comfort zone and it's did one that. Of those, and it, one of those things, like you could see it here and like, and you, you, it's what you can control. Like, how can I do this? I want to be a better speaker. I know just to kind of throw myself in the fire and I have clients asking me about getting to the podcast space. I'm like, for me to really learn and kind of, again, understanding who you are, 
I have to kind of figure it out for myself, get my hands a little bit dirty yeah. and kind of do that. But then kind of finding like the enjoyment of just sitting down and also just taking the time to kind of and like talk to somebody and just get a little bit more. It's like, this is the most like selfish thing I can possibly do for myself. It's cool. just sitting here and dude, it's human to human interaction in a digital driven age where everybody's just talking on screens. Like, Sitting, having a cup of coffee and shooting this shit. Dude, I shit. crushed like, mine. Yeah, you did. Man, yeah, take, a, take a sip yeah. because I'm – Um, you, speaking of the digital age, there's definitely – there's this question I do want to ask. Um, Creative, design, really – coming from LimeWire era of downloading music and seeing like <laughs> all these new tools coming out. So with um, AI being the forefront of technology right now and then how it's like bled into like Adobe design and, and like even like how simple like tools like Canva has been and like, how has that evolved? Um, how does that, how have you, have you used it with your business? Um, have you, uh, what do you, what's your opinion on it? So AI, um, there's a lot of designers who are just, pitchfork ai is terrible yeah look ai can't replace this that's the truth what we were just talking about a couple minutes ago of uh, ai is not going to sit down and have a cup of coffee and get to know you to create it for you you can type in your prompts you can do what you're going to do and i'm sure ai is going to evolve and stop giving people seven fingers and making you know there's there's telltale signs right now to ai they haven't um, you know, perfected it. I'm not like completely against it. Do I use it? No. Um, ha I, I have used it actually. Um, I use it in Photoshop to bring back some old wedding photos for my mother and father-in-law Oh, for their wedding anniversary. It was their, I believe it was their 50th. I don't know. It was, it was a, a, big, a big one. It was a big one. Like we did a big party for them and we got all the old photos and they were like, and photo restoration isn't even something I do or offer, but I wanted to try it. And I went in with AI and some of them were like missing portions and I was able to fill it in and it made it great. You know, it, it was, it was fantastic. It's a tool. It was a tool and I utilized it. Um, am I part of this group that has this fear that AI is going to shut our whole industry down? Absolutely not. It, it will have its downfalls. It'll have its flaws to everybody who makes their resume off, you know, AI and has it write it for them. It's going to come back to bite them in the ass. Like it's going to show you don't have that set of skills, dude. Yeah. And you I, know? I couldn't agree more with that statement because especially I mean, my, my, my wife works in a creative field too. And we kind of talk about it all the time. And she says something that's very profound and it always resonates with me that humans are the tastemakers. Yeah. Like we kind of decide of what AI to kind of do. And that's like, when you could see something that's like, artificially intelligent created or even like a song some songs like oh hilarious this is good but you can kind of tell it's lacking that that depth that that connection that the, that, heart. that the human heart a little bit where it's you 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 can't you can't really replicate that it's, no. it's got to come from somewhere and also learn like depending on it so much like i i use it but i use it exactly how you said as a particular tool like i have this job this task i mean i can either like really fine tune these things or i can just circle and do like auto generate a fill and then say like kind of like clear all this out make it smooth and i'm like oh they actually look good let me just touch this up a little oh, bit like too. some of it's amazing like you know taking a picture and you got all these like people in the background and dude picking his nose in the background while you're taking a nice family photo circle <laughs> remove this yeah and it fills it in saves you hours hours do you remember hours. how long it would take to touch Bro. up that brick and that was my that, that would be my fucking day yeah <laughs> like that was the thorn of post-production mm. that was that was terrible and so ai is great in that in that field right there um i have customers who have been like oh yeah no i have a logo designed and they bring it to me and I know right away there's telltale signs of AI. They, it just, it creates certain things in a weird way. Like I said, it'll have seven fingers or an eyes in the wrong spot or like, or a, color palettes that like the, the color palette is off or the W like there's crooked things that there's nobody who would reasonably do that for mm -hmm. any reason. And it just lacked emotion. It just felt flat and very, you know, computer generated. And that's coming from somebody who generates everything on a computer, yeah. but it's my heart to my hands that are working that computer that are creating it and not just some, you know, 
server that's just calculating at numbers to zeros and ones to come up with it. Because, I mean, I, I'm all for power to the people. I'm all for independent minds, whatever you kind of do for yourself, whatever skills you can hone in. So with all these tools with AI coming out, it is great that you can kind of do a quick little mock-up logo or something for your business that you're trying to get off the ground. But be real with yourself as you expand and as you see the ideas here and, and it's not delivering with you. That's why, I mean, the, 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 the importance of creativity and connection. And that's why this I started the podcast of Create to Connect. That's it. And, and that's and why I had my first like concept solo music album that you actually did the album art design I did. for. Yes, I did. Yeah. I love that. That was great. I remember I was working through that. That was a lot of fun. And we, we were but that was the one that with every song we yeah yeah every in song it did kind of like a little bit of a piece and it made like yeah and once it all came together came like a little it became, puzzle it was a but puzzle it, exactly. i connected. just had the idea and i'm just like i don't know if this is whatever it's just like and i just pitched it to you and you're and how encouraging you were like the, the patience you were with me as i was kind of doing this new endeavor it's something that i always look back and appreciate as just as i've grown as an artist and a musician and even a person one of those things like that that is the perfect example like of everything we have discussed today, which is you and I collaborated together on it. We went out of the comfort zone and tried something a little bit different where with every release, another puzzle piece went together. And, you know, we we worked on that together and we had that human to human interaction of you know, hey, let's tweak this, let's do that, and let's get it there. And then we got it where it needed to be, and it was killer. It was it was super fun to work on, and it's something I always look back and appreciate. But I mean, speaking of speaking of that, um, everything that we talked about today, how we usually kind of like to close these things, or if someone listened to this from A to Z or whatever, maybe skip to the end. Uh, what is one thing you really want to hone in on that we kind of talked about today? You know, my big thing my big thing that i would always say is go for it do not be afraid like if you are to fail you will be okay i feel like the biggest failure you can have as a human being is not putting yourself out there and not trying like don't just coast through because it was easy because it was safe because it was comfortable. It, part of my language, fuck that. Get out there, make waves, go for it, chase your dreams. Like, think about how boring this world would be if people didn't try to make change and do what they dreamt of, whether it be art, whether it be music, whether it be anything you do. Do it to the best of your ability. If you put 100% in, you will get it back. It's just like any simple thing in life. Do good things. Good things come back to you. Try. Just just take the leap. It's worth it. It's worth it. Even if you failed, you know you gave it your all. Don't live with what ifs. That's And always have a really good woman behind you supporting you. <laughs> I couldn't agree more with that. Yeah, that's Absolutely, it. That's man. It. You know, it's about that support system too, man. It's a team. It's a team. You know, neither one of them are sitting here with us right now, but we wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for them and their support that they give us. It's, yeah. It's, it, it's and I, I say it all the time. My my wife is my best friend. She's she's my rock. She's my, she's my soulmate. And she's my biggest supporter. And I know the same is for you. Absolutely, um, yeah. And, you know, just keep that faith, man. Keep that confidence and believe in yourself and go for it. Dude, that's very good advice. And I crushed that coffee so fast. <laughs> dude, thank you so much of for course, taking the time. Of course, my pleasure. Oh my God, dude, this was...